So exactly as the title says, do you have what it takes to work in cybersecurity? And would you even enjoy working in cybersecurity? And just sharing a bit of realness when it comes to cybersecurity careers, because I do think that on social media nowadays, cybersecurity is very glamorized, especially coming off of the big cybersecurity conferences like DEF CON and Black Hat. I feel like cybersecurity as a career is very buzzwordy right now, but I always want to keep it as realistic as possible. So the first thing you want to consider is on-call hours. So most cybersecurity professionals at some point in your career are going to have to deal with on-call hours. Now, those will heavily depend on the company that you go to, whether it has a follow the sun model, if they have you know a team in Asia or a team in Europe. This is typically going to be the big companies, the big banks. If you're working in an SOC or a security operations center, then it's kind of by default that you know that you'll have an on-call rotation at some point. But on-call is basically when you're off work hours. If you typically work nine to five, then there may be an on-call rotation for, for the late evening overnight shift or the early morning shift, especially the ungodly hours of 1 a.m. to maybe 5 a.m. In my last company, we had a pretty small team. We had less than 10 people on the cybersecurity team. And my on-call hours were every other week for the early morning shift. Now, of course, every team is going to have a different on-call hours and on-call rotations and also depends on how big your team is, but typically this is going to be for any cybersecurity incidents or even pings from other teams like SRE or IT that may need a cybersecurity person to come in and to hop on a bridge line or hop on a call to be able to assess some kind of situation that needs security guidance. I mean, there are many roles in tech that have on-call hours, but this is something to consider because I've had coworkers who have been on vacation and got brought in because they had to deal with an incident even when they weren't on call. So maybe this question is more so of the fact that cybersecurity not only works within certain time parameters like a work schedule but if an incident occurs over a weekend or while you're on vacation and you're the only SME that knows how to fix this particular issue then they're probably going to ping you. So just something to keep in mind this is definitely a career path that demands a lot from you not just during your nine to five hours but also outside of work even just thinking about security breaches and all the cybersecurity news that is 24 7. There's always going to be a new breach, a new nation state attacking, a new ransomware attack. There's so many things that come up off hours that you're going to end up thinking about because it may potentially affect your environment and your systems. All right, the third thing I want to talk about is managing people. And I'm not even saying that you're going to manage a team of people. What I mean by this is that cybersecurity in general is a collaborative entire organization effort. Sure, you as a cybersecurity team, a cybersecurity professional, can pass your phishing attack simulations with flying colors, but maybe there's one person on the sales team or the HR team that just isn't as savvy around phishing attacks as you, and they may click on a phishing attack that ends up causing a security incident. Or maybe there's this new urgent patch and you need everyone at the company, let's say there's 500 people at your company, to update their devices. And if you're a smaller company with 500 people, you may not have automatic updates pushed to everyone's machine. That could be an expensive automation. So instead, you're sending out an email blast to the entire company, telling everyone to update their devices and hoping that they read their emails in a timely manner. And maybe the 20, 30 people who didn't update, you're gonna have to go and chase them down yourself to be able to stay compliant with whatever your timelines are for urgent security patches. Or let's say there's a new security procedure that all developers have to follow moving forward to get their code reviewed by a senior engineer. How are you going to make sure that the 50 plus developers at your company are going to follow that rule to the T with no exceptions every time, especially when it comes to auditors that come in and check that they're doing this every single time. Now, all these things don't necessarily sound like you're managing people, but it's more so the fact that your success as a cybersecurity team isn't directly tied to just the 10 people or 30 people or 100 people on the cybersecurity team. It's also tied to the success of every other employee or every other customer or client or stakeholder that relies on your infrastructure, that uses your products, that also needs to know to avoid clicking on phishing attacks, that needs to update their machine on time, that needs to follow certain security protocols and procedures. This, I personally think, is one of the hardest parts of being a cybersecurity professional because even if you have all your ducks in a row and do everything you can to keep the organization safe, there's no 100% guarantee that there's never going to be a security breach or a security incident or someone not doing what they're supposed to do or someone just not knowing about the new procedure because they haven't been paying attention. At the end of the day, this does come back to your team and the effectiveness of your cybersecurity program. And I'm not saying that it's the cybersecurity team's fault that there was an incident or an issue, but just know that it is part of your responsibility to manage those risks or exceptions or anomalies or any other situation. And if you are interested in starting a career in cybersecurity and are looking to enroll in a cybersecurity bootcamp, the one that I recommend is the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp that also has a get a job or get your money back guarantee, which takes out a lot of the risk of joining a bootcamp. It is a fully online bootcamp that covers all the foundations of cybersecurity, hands-on technical projects, 
and helps prepare you for the CompTIA Security Plus certification, which is the most popular cybersecurity beginner certification out there. They also have one-on-one -on -one mentorship, career guidance, resume reviews, and everything you need to help prepare you after you complete the bootcamp to start applying to cybersecurity jobs right away. Plus, you can also get $1,000 off the entire bootcamp using my code with Sandra. And if you don't get a job within a certain amount of time after graduating from the bootcamp, you'll get your money back if you qualify for their job guarantee. You can check out the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp using the link in my description. I know I've given a lot of examples examples of this. Uh, this is something that I really do feel passionate about because as someone who came from a smaller company and had previously worked in a Fortune 50 company, I see these same problems in both organizations. Because when you think about it, that salesperson, that HR recruiter, they have their own jobs. Sure, as a cybersecurity team, you need everyone at the company to complete their phishing attack training within two weeks of sending it out. But that engineering manager may be dealing with emergencies all day. They may have 20 direct reports. Maybe they were on vacation for those two weeks. These are all things that you have to manage as a cybersecurity team, even when it's out of your control. And that is what makes working in the cybersecurity team a lot harder because you also have to get other teams and other people on board and doing the right thing. And I know that can stress a lot of people out out because even if you've checked off all the items on your to-do list, there may still be hundreds of people that you need to also do that thing. The next two things to consider, I'm just going to cover this very briefly because I've talked about it before, and that is, are you willing to get cybersecurity certifications and work on cybersecurity projects before ever getting a job in cybersecurity. I know a lot of people who try to skip one of these two routes, and I personally think it's going to be really, really difficult for you to get into cybersecurity without at least cybersecurity project experience or a cybersecurity certification like the popular one, the CompTIA Security Plus. Of course, there are people who are able to start their careers without these things, but right now, considering how competitive this job market is, it just wouldn't make sense to not have these on your resume. Now, I know there are people who don't believe that cybersecurity is an entry-level job. Personally, I do, as I have started my career entry level in a cybersecurity rotational program, but I will agree that the bar to entry for cybersecurity is much higher than most other tech roles out there. And that's primarily because of the obsession that cybersecurity folks have with certifications. Now, of course, a lot of it is for compliance reasons, because if you're going through an audit, then you most likely want your auditing lead to have certain certifications that make them valid for the job. You can't really get away from getting certifications and technical projects. The coworkers I've had with 15 to 20 years of experience may not have a single certification, but if you're just starting out now as an entry-level cybersecurity professional, you'll need a certification, just with the way that the job market is changing and how competitive it's getting. And if you are willing to do both of those things, then you're most likely on the right path. And you're probably already doing better than 80% of most cybersecurity candidates. The next thing I want to talk about is dealing with ambiguity, because when you're working in cybersecurity, you may not always have all the answers before you have to make some kind of decision to move forward. And this is something that you'll see a lot, especially for more senior roles in cybersecurity. In your early career, you may not be making as many of these decisions, but a lot of it is going to come down to your past experience and your foundational cybersecurity knowledge. When there's an ongoing incident, let's say with a third-party vendor that you're using, like SolarWinds, if they're having an incident and they're still researching how to fix this potential attack vector, your company could be sitting ducks and your job is to mitigate any potential risks or attack that may occur due to that vulnerability or an active exploit. And this typically means that you're working under pressure and under the clock. You may need to have the development team put out an urgent patch without fully knowing the details of an exploit or a vulnerability. Now, cybersecurity news does move pretty quickly, but this is one of the reasons why cybersecurity professionals are under a lot of stress and burnout rates are typically at an all-time high, not in a good way. In fact, cybersecurity is one of the areas in tech that have the highest rates of burnout from their early career analysts to their engineers, all the way up to CISOs, because as a cybersecurity team and for cybersecurity leaders, if there's a cybersecurity incident, which again, there's no way to be 100% defended from cyber attacks or cyber incidents, it puts a lot of pressure on you to be able to secure an entire organization, especially considering that not all cybersecurity teams have the same budgets or funding. I have heard of and seen many cybersecurity teams that frankly, don't have the budget for certain tools, that would be a really, really nice to have to be able to help them keep an organization more secure. I do think companies are prioritizing cybersecurity budgets more nowadays, considering all the ransomware attacks, all the DDoS attacks, every single security breach that has happened since the beginning of this year, and how the number of cyber attacks and how much they cost companies just keep going up every single year. And last but not least on this list is keeping up with cybersecurity news and whether or not cybersecurity and, and the things that you learn are actually interesting to you. Now, I'm not saying that you should be reading cyber news on a Sunday when you should be spending time with your family or your children, but I do think that it takes a certain type of person to be really good at what they do as a cybersecurity professional, and that is typically someone who is innately interested in the work itself. 
you're interested in attack vectors, you're interested in who the nation states are and who they're targeting and why, you're interested in the new CVEs and digging into exploits and reverse engineering them. I'm not saying that your job has to also be your passion and your side projects. That definitely really does help. Even if you force someone to read cybersecurity news and the latest headlines, if they're not interested, they're just going to skim them and they're really not going to get much out of it. But if you're actually interested in what's being discussed, the actual topics at hand, then you're going to get a lot more out of reading cybersecurity news compared to someone who just feels like they have to do it as part of the job. So if you watch this video and are thinking, hmm, maybe cybersecurity isn't the best place to start my career and, and if you're interested in starting a career in IT first instead, I'd recommend the Course Careers IT course that is taught by Josh Matikor, who is another fellow YouTuber who also happened to start his career in IT before transitioning into cybersecurity. He's also done interviews of his IT course graduates who have actually been able to find a job after completing his IT course. So I would highly recommend checking this out. The course also gives you hands-on practical labs with Active Directory, Azure, and a help desk ticketing setup. If you're interested, you can also get $50 off the entire course using the link in my description for the Course Careers IT course. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. I know a lot of this was just asking the questions of hey, is this career actually one that you'd be interested in, even with a lot of the potential downsides that I've listed in this video? And if your answer is still yes, then you're probably going to thrive in this field if you can look past some of the downsides because it is, at the end of the day, a really rewarding career path with high salaries, great job stability, and just very impactful work in terms of protecting the data, the people, and your organizations that you're serving. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Discord channel and feel free to connect on LinkedIn to stay connected. I also recently made a cybersecurity Instagram at Cyber with Sandra, and I post more real-time cybersecurity career tips and resources on there. So feel free to check it out. All of it will be linked in my description. I post videos weekly. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.